When the COVID-19 crisis struck, we had um, quite a substantial amount of excess capacity in our network, and we managed to ride through the resulting surge in traffic quite successfully. Now, the reason we had this excess capacity was because of an event 12 months earlier. The Rugby World Cup was provided online for the first time via internet TV. Chorus did a partnership with the industry and the RSPs and the content provider of that IPTV signal. And we put significant capacity into our network so that it would operate very well during the Rugby World Cup and it did in fact run really well. We also put in monitoring systems in place to identify any issues in the network very rapidly. But as a result of that, um, when the COVID hit, we had excess capacity that could be used to provide services during the day and worked quite successfully. In preparation for the Rugby World Cup, we did some traffic monitoring systems, and these were systems that updated at a five minute frequency and they were published to the public. And the purpose of these was to demonstrate at any point in time the performance of our network and if there was any issues in our network. So these tools were still in place when COVID arrived, so they um, were used to track um, the COVID event and the daily traffic as it occurred in the network. So the first graph we're gonna show you today is the downstream traffic graph. These graphs are a 24 hour period and the different colored lines are different specific days of traffic. And this is the traffic that is transiting our handovers to our RSP customers. So as you'll see in the downstream direction, which is the main downstream path is the data from the RSP handovers into the home. The blue line is a typical day prior to COVID. The interesting features of these graphs are that it shows a slight dip at 9 a.m. And that's the school run as parents take the school children to school. And then there's a similar dip followed by a steeper rise around the 3 p.m. when they pick the kids up from school again. So that's a typical New Zealand day, that blue line, rising early in the morning through the day and having a peak 9 p.m. in the evening. During COVID, and in particular three days into our stay-at-home notice from the government, the traffic had changed quite substantially and was in general about 40% higher than it had been previously. And that's the yellow curve. And in particular on this day, a new version of software was released for a popular game. And that occurred at about eight o'clock at night. And you see that very steep peak and solid extra traffic throughout the day and in particularly at peak time. So games that are released in the off peak hours in America, that same time coincides with the peak time in New Zealand. So we typically have a surge in traffic. And then if we move to the second graph we're gonna show you, which is the upstream traffic. So upstream is only about a tenth of the traffic, but this has a very fascinating behavior and is worth looking at. So the blue line again is a typical day prior to the COVID event. And then the other lines are days that occurred during the COVID event. And as you'll see from about 9 a.m. in the morning through to almost 4 p.m. in the afternoon, there's a distinct sawtooth effect in the traffic data. So what is occurring here is that every half hour, Zoom meetings and video conference meetings are starting they're scheduled to start on the hour. So everyone's logging in on the hour and starting their meetings and causing a surge in traffic. And it's slowly dropping off then over the next half an hour or an hour and only to be replaced again by another surge at the half hour point. So that was a, a traffic pattern we'd never seen before and is probably quite peculiar to this event. Chorus has had for some time a congestion-free network commitment. The Chorus network exists to carry data from a customer's premise to a handover point for an RSP customer. The goal is that we want to move that data in as quickly and as efficiently as possible. It's a hot potato. We want to take it from the customer's premise and get it off and through the handover as fast as possible using as fewer interfaces as we can. We have no way of adding value to that data. So the best thing we can do with it is move it quickly and rapidly. So as a result, we decided quite some time ago that we would operate the network in a congestion-free way. Now, obviously there's other congestion points in the whole internet experience that occur in other people's areas, but in the area that Chorus controls from that customer's premise through to the, the handover point, we attempt to keep it congestion-free. So we, um, do a lot of investment into our links and we invest well ahead of time to ensure that they're never congesting at any point in time. And we're quite successful at that. What COVID has shown us is that that strategy is still a very sound strategy. And in fact, it's especially useful for unforeseen traffic events, which occur not that infrequently. The extra capacity that we're putting in place to keep our network congestion free um, puts us in good stead when these unexpected traffic events um, uh, turn up. How are you guys? Are you okay? Yes. 
What's the matter with him? He's got bad news. Carl, this is Sammy. Hi. He's here to install some fibre to help with... That. <laughs> fibre. It's our internet now. 10 g Pond is obviously the next evolution of g Pond. So eight years ago, we started rolling out our g Pond network, and some of that equipment is starting to get towards the point in time at which you start considering its replacement. And simultaneously, we've been quite successful at one gigabit per second products. And we can see an opportunity in the marketplace for speeds even higher than one gigabit, going say two and four and eight. Simultaneously with this, the XGS Pond standard has evolved and matured. And finally, equipment is turning up that is at an acceptable price point to consider moving in that direction. So these, these sort of three factors are aligning. One of the things about XGS PON is that it's not actually a 10 gig technology, even though that is the line rate. The maximum speed that customers will experience is about 8.8 .8 gigabits per second on a speed test. So we decided that we wanted to move away from using that, the 10 gig in our marketing, because it could um, cause a bit of confusion in the marketplace. So we've introduced um, a brand name called Hyperfiber. And under that Hyperfiber brand name, we are launching two gig and four gig products now, and then later we'll be launching an eight gig product. Hyperfiber is based on the XGS Pond standard, and it requires um, new equipment installed at the OLT and new equipment installed in the customer's premise but we don't have to touch the expensive fiber infrastructure. So it's just the terminal electronics that have to be changed out. So it makes it a reasonably cost effective. It's not as big an investment as the original fiber investment. As we work through the various issues that introducing this technology would, would cause on the network, one of the biggest challenges we came up against was that our uplinking in our existing network, that's the links between the OLT shelves and the aggregation switches are predominantly um, 10 gigabits per second links. And also our handover circuits to our retail service providers, um, they're also 10 gigabits per second. Now, if you attempt to run an eight gigabit per second service through a 10 gigabit pipe, you'll get some degradation of the service and you'll get degradation of the service to other customers who are also using that pipe. Obviously, this was a bit of concern to us. So we've actually held back from launching the eight gig product and we're doing upgrades to 100 gig uplinking in our OLT shelves. And we have 100 gig uplinks now available to the RSPs. So as RSPs take up the 100 gig handovers and we introduce the 100 gig uplinks to our OLT shelves, we'll be able to launch, um, progressively launch that eight gig product. Chorus is a pure layer fixed line operator. So we don't have any mobile cell sites or infrastructure. We do, however, provide services and fibre um, linking services to the three mobile operators in New Zealand. We're in a competitive environment. There's other providers in that service. We certainly have the longest reach and the deepest reach into rural. The standard build practice in New Zealand for quite some time has to be, has been to put fibre um, cables into um, mobile cell sites. So, so New Zealand is in a very good position with a good fibre infrastructure to the mobile cell sites and Chorus is well positioned to provide the back all services that are going to be essential to deliver the customer experiences going to be expected of 5G and the 5G handsets. Chorus has had an almost 20 year um, relationship with Nokia in the broadband space. We started off purchasing the ASAM ATM DSLAM and then we uh, evolved into um, the ISAM XD shelf and then the ISAM FD and then more laterally um, we've had um, the ISAM FX shelf, which is the OLT GPON shelf. At any time we've had an issue or a problem or we've, we've presented a challenge that we've had um, to Nokia, they've responded with the full resources of, of, that they have at hand and have provided us with a very good service. So it's been a, a very successful partnership over those um, almost 20 years now. Having a lot of customers on the one gigabit per second speed, the way they experience our service is via Wi-Fi. So they're in their homes, they have a device in their hand and they expect to experience a one gigabit per second experience with the response of that device and they don't necessarily get that experience. And the predominant cause of that is the speed of the Wi-Fi network within their home. So we're launching a series of initiatives in the in-home experience space. We're planning to launch ONTs that have um, Wi-Fi radios in them. We're gonna get involved with the beacons and Wi-Fi mesh repeaters so that we can improve the coverage within homes with repeaters. And then we're also going to look at um, software tools that help manage and operate and identify problems in the space. 
So intention is to partner with our RSB partners. We've been very standoffish and um, just presented an ethernet interface in the home. So we want to get more involved and become part of the solution to this in-home experience problem.